Alright, welcome to this episode of my playthrough of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Things have gotten really dark. Um, so, Shinra has dropped the Sector Seven plate onto the Sector Seven slums, effectively destroying an entire city and killing many, many people just to uh, try and crush Avalanche. That does mean that Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse have all died. On top of that, um, the Turks, and Tsung specifically, have located and abducted Aerith. And... Yeah, a lot of bad shit's happened. And this is this is an example of the kind of thing where I've said in the past where Final Fantasy VII does not pull its punches. It really doesn't. Things have a lot of really really bad things have just happened. And there's not a lot of hope to be seen the one and only piece of hope that we've got out of this whole thing is that Marlene, Barrett's daughter, seems to be safe. Before the pillar fell, uh, before the plate fell because of the, the pillar was collapsed, Tifa asked Aerith to find Marlene and get her somewhere safe, and we believe Aerith has done that. So now we need to go and see where... see if we can find where Aerith took Marlene before she was abducted by Tsung. Let's go. So at the end of last episode, Cloud told Barrett that Marlene was okay and Marlene was safe. Barrett asked him for more information and Cloud just wordlessly walked off. So now Tifa and Barrett are following Cloud. Let's see what happens. How could this happen? I didn't really think that... What the hell is going on? Yeah, of course you didn't think, senior officer. That's why... I don't... What do we do now? What you were hired to do. Get these people out of here. You should never just blindly accept authority. <laughs> Which is one of the main themes of Final Fantasy VII. How authority is not necessarily good just because they are authority. Another thing that really got played on in the recent events is... I mentioned way back near the beginning how children were a very important minor theme of Final Fantasy VII. And man oh man did that get played on with Marlene and Aerith. This happened before when the city was being built. It was a nightmare just like this. Ah. That customer from the other day? He was from Sector 7. You think he's okay? <sighs> I certainly hope so. Shinra needs our support now, more than ever. Of course, these people don't realize that it was Shinra who did it. <laughs> I know. Can't even imagine falling that far. You stop it with that talk. I don't even want to think about it.
I said, where you going? Aerith's house. It's in the Sector 5 slums. And that's where Marlene is? Where we hope she is. Tell me she is. Give me something to hang on to. Even if she's not, I won't blame you for it, I swear. Who am I kidding? I'd probably try to tear your head off. Hey Tifa, know anything about ancients? I know I've heard of them at least. They come up in planetology books. Meant to be the original stewards of the planet. Could even commune with it, talk to it and stuff. That must be why the Turks wanted her so badly. Within my veins flows the blood of ancients. This planet is my birthright. It's nothing. Let's go. So what I was going to say before that cutscene happened um, is that if you are new to the Final Fantasy franchise and this is your first experience with it, one thing you should know is that this isn't the only game where stuff like this happens. The Final Fantasy series has long been incredibly adept at harnessing immense sadness and anger and frustration, but also hope and optimism and joy. This is a series that is very, very emotionally attuned, if you allow it to be. Hey, pretty crazy, huh? Can you believe this mess? You doing all right? I am, but I can't say the same about my birds. Poor things are scared half to death. Carts ain't running right now. Whoa, someone forget a plate? Man, how much you had to drink, son? We ain't missing no plate. I'm telling you, that quake I felt? It ain't no quakes, neither. Because you being a drunken asshole. And, my and here we are back at Wall Market. <laughs> but remarkably, in spite of the bright colors and bright lights, not a happy place this time. Wait. Over there. What the hell are they doing here? Their jobs, probably. Just focus on seeing Marlene again. Nothing else. Yeah, we ain't gonna get a better chance. Most like, yeah. We need to be ready for Who did he point to? Sure 
way there. We're a pharmacy, but we stock other stuff too. I feel it would be prudent to restock on some things if I can. Actually, I'm doing pretty good on everything he sells. Thanks a bunch. Found him? We're searching the compound as we speak, sir. That's who he was referring to, the public security guards at the end Anything? of the road there. Nothing as of yet, sir. Oh, there's uh, Andrea. Did you find what you were looking for? Thanks to you, I did. Good. Now never let it go again. I don't see Madam M over here. She's probably further along. I'm going to take a quick moment and check these alleyways. Oh, it's not letting me go that way. Will it let me go this way? As we speak, sir. It is letting me go this way. Because I figure with everybody out looking at the commotion, that ch the, these chests are going to be not blocked anymore. And this one for sure isn't. A Moogle medal. Well, the game didn't stop me. I stopped myself before getting to that other alley, so let's see if I can get to, into it. Also, I'm just realizing I never really commented on Sephiroth's appearance as we were approaching Wall Market. Oh yeah, it stops Anything. me. Be Nothing as of yet, sir. The game stops me before I get to that alley. Yeah. Um, that appearance by Sephiroth is... It's something. The first thing we need to do is find a place to take refuge. Well, this is a fine mess. How bad is it here? Compared to Sector 7, we're doing fine. But that's hardly an accomplishment. Is it true that Sector 7's pretty much destroyed? You guys run into Jesse at the pillar? Yeah. Biggs, too. They were both in pretty bad shape. Let me through, damn it. Let but Wedge wasn't up there with them. He got out. All right. He got out of the pillar. He didn't get out of the sector, unfortunately. Fortunately, from here, it's a pretty straight shot to Sector 5. So let's see what happens. Gotta go find the others. Huh? If we don't look for them, who will? Uh, right. Hey, Cloud. Gonna need your help with it, too. Right. You said Marlene is. Where I think she is. It's a house on the other side of town. Well, come on then. Pick up the pace. I'm going as fast as you are. I can't even imagine. 
imagine how it looks over there. And now, anywhere in the is still safe? Just ignore the map. Is there another explosion? <laughs> That's the house. Marlene! Marlene! Where's Marlene? Is she here? Barrett. <sighs> Sorry, I'm Barrett. Marlene's my little girl. Marlene. She's got short hair. She's cute as a button, with the heart of an angel. She was wearing, uh, pink. She was wearing a She's pink dress today. She's sleeping Huh? Oh. I said she's sleeping. Uh. I want to see her, too. Come on. Let's go look in on her. Keep it down. Don't wake her. Maybe you should join your friend upstairs. Oh well, Myra. Marlene, my baby. Thank God. Shinra has my daughter now. I'm sorry. No, I'm the one who asked her to go get Marlene. We'd only just met, but she was so kind and helpful. I took advantage of her. It's not your fault. It was only a matter of time before she ended up back there. <sighs> Because she's an ancient. Is that it? So she told you about that. She must trust you all a great deal. Yes, Aerith is an ancient. Probably the last one living. She's not my daughter. Not by blood, I mean. If that's what you were wondering. <sighs> About 15 years ago. My husband, he'd been shipped off to fight on the front lines. But then I received a letter saying he'd be home for a bit. So when the day came, I went to the station to meet him. But, he didn't come. I couldn't help fearing the worst, even then. But I told myself his leave must have been postponed, that he'd been delayed. Every day I went, to wait and to pray. And that's how I met her, her and her mother. I thought maybe they'd run away from Wall Market, or that they were topsiders fallen on hard times. I'd seen that sort of thing a lot. Take Aerith somewhere safe. 
Those were her mother's dying words. My husband had been away for so long, and I was lonely. So I convinced myself the safest place for the girl was with me. It took no time at all for her to start feeling like family. She was a real chatterbox. She told me strange stories. Like how she and her mother had escaped from some sort of facility. And how she wasn't sad because her mother had just returned to their planet. Their planet, huh? Yeah, that sounds about right. I didn't understand any of it at the time. When I asked if she meant one in the sky, she said no. This one, right here. I mean, what can you say to that? Mommy, don't be sad. That's what she said to me one day, out of the blue. So I asked her, what's wrong? A man you really, really loved just died. His heart came a long way to say goodbye. But he couldn't stay because he had to return to the planet. I didn't believe her, of course. And then, a few days later, I received a letter saying my husband had been killed in action. Things like that, she'd just know. It was a lot to deal with, but we were happy. <laughs> and then came the knock. Just any little girl. You're a descendant of the ancients. I had no idea what he meant, so I said, Who are the ancients? They were the original stewards of the planet, whose boundless knowledge and wisdom shall guide us to the promised land. <clears throat> Some believe the promised land to be a myth, others, an allegory of sorts. But we take the words of the scriptures at face value and believe it to be quite real. Which is why Shinra would like very much for Aerith to help You're us- You're wrong! I'm not an ancient! But Aerith, even when you're all alone, don't you hear voices whispering secrets? No, never! <clears throat> but all three of us knew that wasn't true. That man knew exactly who Aerith was, where she'd come from, and what she could do. They knew where she was, but they didn't just take her? Doesn't sound like the Turks I know. She had to come willingly, otherwise it wouldn't work, they said. That's why, even if they did take her away, I'm sure she's still being treated like a guest, and that they'll send her straight back home once they get what they need. I doubt it. You're not planning anything, are you? Don't make things worse than they already are. If I lost her too, I don't know if I could, if I could ever. Just don't. Cloud, maybe she's right about this. Maybe they'll let Aerith go when it's all over. Maybe we'd be better off waiting a little while. Let's head back to Sector 7. Got things to take care of. Like checking up on the bar. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Once it gets going, it doesn't let up. This is a game about loss. There is a lot of, of loss in this game. And people finding the strength to keep on going after experiencing such loss. The main entrance to Sector 7 is buried under rubble now. So how are we supposed to get back inside? Underground passage in the park. Ah, uh, good plan. But how do we get to the park? I know another way to get there. Aerith showed me before. <laughs> this ancient girl knows her stuff. Didn't mean anything by it. into the episode here before I start a whole journey back to Sector 7. So you know the drill. Click over there. Join me next time as we head back to Sector 7 to see if we can check on the bar and we'll see what happens. See you then.